The goal of this video is to give a short and concise introduction to using Siemens Polarian requirements with the LDR8 tool suite. Now the starting point, of course, is Polarian requirements. And here we have a, a simple project that I've created in which I have just one system level requirement, which of course is not verified. And underneath I have four high level requirements. And under each high level requirement, I have a number of low level requirements. And it's these low level requirements that I want to, to verify. We can see here for the moment, they're not verified. How am I going to verify these? Well, associated with the low level requirements, I have a low level test. And so we're going to import these into the tool, verify the requirements, and then I want to export back into Polarin and update the status of these tests. So let's go now into TV Manager. And inside TV Manager, let's start by bringing in the system level requirements. So I'm going to right click here, Polarian, import from Polarian, and there I have the system level requirements. So I can now show the mapping between the attributes inside the Polarian project and the attributes inside the TV Manager project. I could refresh the attributes, and here we can see that I've mapped just these attributes here, and by default, everything is read only. But what I want to be able to do is to export and update the status of the reference inside Polarin. And so I've mapped it to the requirement status in TV Manager, and I've made it read write. I've also created a query string here to say that I only want to import requirements that are the type system level. So let's import these, and we should find we have one system level requirement. There we can see we've imported it. Now let's go down and import the high level requirements. So this time it should find four. The difference here is we've got a filter or a query to bring in just the high level requirements. Again, let's import these. And there we can see we have the four high level requirements. We can see that they effectively link to the system level requirement, so we can show the hierarchy here. And now let's bring in the low level requirements. So let's do the same again here. Okay, and again, very similar, except this time we can see we've brought in just the low level requirements. So this should bring in 10 low level requirements. So again, they will be mapped underneath. And there we can see we have the low level requirements. Right, now what I want to be able to do is maybe let's take a look at these requirements. Well, let's create a look at this view and let me add into here the system level requirement. So there we have the system level requirement. And now we can see the traceability. Why is this, for this low level requirement here? We can see it traces upstream. If I was to click on a, a high level requirement, again, we can see the upstream and downstream traceability. What I want to be able to do is to trace this down to the source code. So I'm going to go to my source view here. And here we can see that I've got a function safe and compress. Well, I'm going to map that to this low level requirement. And I'm going to map safe compress to this low level requirement. I could do the same, of course, with the other uh, functions and low level requirements. And now I can see, well, here we have a, a function. Why is it here? And there I can trace all the way back to the system level requirement. Similarly, I can click and I've got this full traceability both upstream and downstream. So now I want to be able to verify these requirements. So the next thing to do is to bring in the low level tests. So let's go and bring in the low level tests. So there we go. So this time we're going to bring in the test cases and we can see here we have a query to bring in the test cases only of type unit test. And again, we have the verification status that is being set to read write, so we can update that inside Polarian. And I've also got a field specifying the test case file that I want to execute. And again, I've associated it here with one of the attributes in TV Manager. So let's import these. Okay, so there we have all the test cases. Let's accept those. And now we can see they've been situated underneath 
the low level requirements. And as I mentioned, we can see associated with these, we have a test case file. So I can effectively execute that test case file. So let's take a look at the safe compress. Let's simply go and regress this. This is now going to use uh, TB run to effectively execute the test case. So there we can see it's actually used in this particular case with the Green Hills multi uh, environment. So it's run the test and if it passes, which it has, we can see we have a, a green dot. If you want, we can actually take a look at the regression report. So there we have the regression report and we can see everything has passed. We can see the inputs and outputs are as expected. So let's go back. And now let's take a look at, uh, well, maybe let's take a look at the, the coverage. So let's see what coverage we obtained from running that test. Let's verify that with the tool suite. And then we'll be able to take a look at the, the call graph. And there we can see this is a function we've just tested, safe compress. And we can see we've effectively got a 100% statement, 100% branch, 100% MCDC. So that's good. Now let's take a look at this other function here, safe uncompress. So in this case, we're going to do exactly the same. I'm going to right click and simply regress it. So once more, it's going to generate a harness. It's going to build it, execute it in the, the Green Hills environment there. And it's now going to analyze the results. In this particular case, we can see we still have a red dot. So the test has failed. Why did it fail? Well, again, we could take a look at the regression report. So on the regression report for safe and compress, we can see that we've done it this particular time. We can see the test has failed. And if we scroll down, we should be able to take a look and find exactly why it failed. And in this particular case, we can see we were, we were expecting here to get a little X as the character, but actually we got the character zero. So we need to investigate why that failed. But now I want to go and update the status inside Polari. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my Uniview and we can see we have one requirement that's verified. So let's right click on here and this time let's export. And let's export not the high level. Let me just cancel that. I just got the wrong one there. So let's go and export and I want to export the low level requirements. So we'll accept all the requirements and we'll export. And the only thing it should change or update is the verification status. So let's export that. Wait for that to, to execute. And then we should be able to go into Polarian. So let's go back to Polarian here and we'll refresh. And if we scroll down, we should now be able to see that we have a requirement that has been verified and there we can see the date when it was verified. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us.